Okay, so Pi News episode 82, and there's going to be a lot of Pi 5 content in here, but there is also some non Pi 5 content as well. Uh, and as you can see, I've got RetroPi running on the Raspberry Pi 5, and uh, it's actually running pretty well. Uh, I managed to install this by installing Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit Lite using Raspberry Pi Imager, which recommended it as a Raspberry 5 operating system. And uh, I just used the install script, and then I basically installed all the cores to be able to play around and see what works. But loads of it does work absolutely fine. I've also got LibreLec or Kodi running on my laptop display, and uh, this works surprisingly well. And I found out about this through uh, one of the episodes of PiCast. Jeff Geerling mentioned that he's been testing it, but as you can expect on Pi 5, it is nice and snappy. Uh, so we go to say videos and video add-ons and we just start playing a bit of Red Bull. Let's go with channels, bike, latest clips. You can see it's super snappy. Let's just pick anything that's there. And the quality looks great. And from what Jeff Gerding was saying, it looks like it's going to handle some much higher resolutions than we've seen on Pi 5. We also now have a download of Batacera Linux. Thanks to Harley N for letting me know about this. So let's download it. So if you search for Batacera, go to Downloads, and scroll down, you can see Pi 4 was there. There's the Pi 5 beta version, so just click on it and that will download. So 1.7 gigabytes. Thanks also goes to Si Hong Lim for sending me a message saying that Real VNC now works on Bookworm in Raspberry Pi 5 but there is a small glitch in display and mouse cursor. It comes with the latest update on the Raspberry Pi config. So that's good news because VNC, which is remote desktop, and you can remote desktop your Pi from anywhere in the world. So it's a really good system. Next up, Jeff Geerling has been testing NVMe boot on the Raspberry Pi 5. You can see he's got a custom board here with the little ribbon cable that goes in the PCIe and he's even managed to get PCIe 3 speeds. He talks about it in some more detail in the episode of PiCast I mentioned earlier on. But he also has a different board because this was mounted vertically on the board he was showing on PiCast. So yeah, really interesting to see what's going on with that PCIe slot. Tom's Hardware had a story, impatient Pi enthusiasts cross English Channel to buy Raspberry Pi 5. You can buy the Raspberry Pi 5 in the Cambridge store. Obviously check up to date information, but I've seen people on Facebook going in there uh, and being able to get them. So they're saying they're in stock and available with the power adapter, with the cooler as well. But people have definitely been mentioning in some territories, uh, it's much more expensive for shipping and also the, the shipping times are a lot slower. I was mentioned in Pi News. So my uh, Raspberry Pi 5 tablet uh, had a little write up on Raspberry Pi News and it was quite nice to see that in there. So I appreciate that. Mteria make an Android version for the Raspberry Pi 4, but they also did a little write-up on Raspberry Pi 5, and they did mention in this that Android on Raspberry Pi 5 will be available soon, so I definitely look forward to that. Also, Consta Kang, who has made the most builds of Android on Raspberry Pi, is also, uh, well, what can we see here? So someone's asked the question in his blog, so not current builds, of course. We'll see if, when I get a Pi 5, I don't see any reason why it couldn't run Android eventually, Linux source code was already pushed and some of the Mesa code for the new video core GPU is under review. In any case, this is going to take some time and it's going to require very recent 6.1 kernel and mainline Mesa. So Android 14 is more likely. Well, Android 14 is now out and is available for Raspberry Pi 4. I did a video showing how to install it and how to install the Google Play Store. So I definitely look forward to a Raspberry Pi 5 version of Android. From Facebook and the Dospian Facebook page, from the end of October, Dospian will be rebuilt from scratch on Raspberry Pi 5 OS Bookworm. Dospian 2 will be a reality. And if you don't know about Dospian, it's a way of running, well, Windows, Windows 95 and 98, I think I had running in Dospian, uh, and also loads of old PC games, loads of old DOS PC games. And it did work really well on Raspberry Pi 4, so it'll be really interesting to see what it will do on the Pi 5. And thanks to Tom Tumchenbauer for mentioning this story. Uh, Raspberry Pi 5 cases and coolers are finally available. So Tom's Hardware did a story with some 52 Pi cases and various other manufacturers. You can see here, Eda Tech, Raspberry Pi 5. These are passive covers for the bottom and the top. So it'll be interesting to see how effective they are um, without any active cooling. And you can see there's a nice looking one there. They certainly look cool. Flerk has also gone down the route of passive and 52Pi has got a more traditional with a fan. With the official Raspberry Pi 5 
connection so it will work with the temperature of the Pi and speed up and slow down the fan accordingly which I really like and uh, they featured my video which was really nice so I covered the ice tower cooler which is excellent which is what I'm using now uh, I'm going to do a test at some point comparing it to the official Pi 5 cooler which I also think is really good and this is uh, a fan case again temperature controlled uh, with the fan in the top there. So let's cover some non Raspberry Pi 5 content. So Techno frames made with Raspberry Pi and if we just press play on this I'll just play a little bit of it. So they're like interactive frames that you can put your hand on and it plays some techno beats. I won't play any more of that just in case but uh, if we have a look here there's one ESP32 in each frame and a Raspberry Pi down in the speaker box. Playback is handled with pure data and all communication is wireless over UDP. Definitely looks like good fun. This story was interesting it probably popped up on my feed because I've got a first gen Nissan Leaf uh, which has got the older style of charger. Well there are still Chadamo chargers about but CCS is the sort of dominant one going forward doesn't bother me because I charge at home anyway on a granny charger but for people who are interested in having electric charging out and about if we scroll down through there's loads of details about the charging but I realize not everybody's interested in that side of it but on the shopping list they use a Raspberry Pi 0W and there's uh, various different pictures here so this is the different connector than you would normally get in a first gen Nissan Leaf and you can see there's various different things in here, which uh, I certainly wouldn't want to uh, approach that with the sort of higher voltages that they run at. But um, yeah, they obviously know more about what they're doing than I do. But I'll put a link in the description if you're planning to do this yourself. Now this post on Facebook is a cyber deck and just have a look at it inside this rucksack. It just looks ridiculous. Uh, so cyber deck addicted, powered by two Raspberry Pi 4. I will share this frame on GitHub, I'd like to see other build inside a backpack if someone have a link or picture please share in the comments so I won't play the video uh, but I'll just sort of skip through a few of the bits so look at all the antenna on top I reckon you would probably get stopped walking around with that on your back but it is look at all the components that goes into it there's some real dedication that's gone through this a nice frame that's been built for it look at that very impressive not the sort of thing i would do but uh, i definitely admire people doing that sort of thing we had an apple pocket pi emulator this is based on a raspberry pi 02 w i think stock is getting much better on those now it's a brilliant device for the price and really good for handheld builds because it's so tiny and uses so little power so you can see it's got a 3d printed case on it and controls separate little board here yeah very nice then we had from hexta.io William Herr's RP dot is just about the smallest Raspberry Pi development board possible and it is incredibly tiny and there's some close-up pictures of the Raspberry Pi chip here and a pen nib just to show how small it is assembled entirely by hand using a stencil very expired lead free solder paste and a hot plate plus a 3d printed jig and a hot air station for the RP2040 chip and there's more details in the description Reddit had this quite cool looking clock a couple of months ago now uh, which is powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico and they're going to add more features in the future so if you're interested in doing that sort of thing it's probably had some updates by now. And this one from 9 to 5 mac project that brings CarPlay to Tesla gets a major boost with improved performance hardware bundle. So you can see here Apple CarPlay which I use, I've got a little screen uh, in my petrol car uh, which I use my iPhone with and CarPlay is excellent really works well great for navigation and things like that but it doesn't officially work in a Tesla you can also get a version of Android Auto as well uh, and here you go when we covered Tesla Android last year it was a Raspberry Pi based solution powered by a custom build of Android for iPhone users however CarPlay support is the obvious selling point here a recent firmware update for Tesla Android highlights some significant performance improvements to the experience and last up, uh, a Tom's Hardware story, ARM acquires minority stake in Raspberry Pi. ARM Holdings PLC today announced that it has made a strategic investment, a minority stake in Raspberry Pi Limited, the ARM of Raspberry Pi responsible for the new Raspberry Pi 5 and past Raspberry Pi products. So ARM's minority stake extends the long-term partnership between ARM and Raspberry Pi, which has seen ARM CPUs featuring all Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi Pico SoC. 
And at the bottom here, Arms Minority Stake in Raspberry Pi also allows a firm commitment to the continuation of ARM CPUs in future Raspberry Pis. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.